In the Navy, success often depends on being careful among potential dangers. This is especially true when working around electrically initiated ordnance, each of which contains a potentially dangerous item. It's called an EED, an electro-explosive device. Set off by electrical signals, these devices are used to ignite rocket motors and activate power systems and weapons. EEDs are used to cut cables, and they are extensively employed to detonate warheads. EEDs are an essential part of ordnance design, but they present a problem. They can be set off accidentally by radiation from nearby radars or other sources of electromagnetic signals. This ordnance is primed with an EED device. It's designed to work when a firing signal is applied, but under certain conditions, this could happen. As more and more powerful transmitters come on the scene, Navy ordnance and crews are in an increasingly hostile environment. Here's why. Just as an antenna receives a radio broadcast, metallic weapons and circuits receive radio frequency, or RF energy, from an electromagnetic field. On ships and shore stations, these fields are being created by ever more powerful radars and communication systems as technology progresses. These radiation signals induce current to flow in EED circuits, and the device, which cannot discriminate between an accidentally induced signal and a purposeful one, explodes. This premature firing causes either a safety problem or a reliability problem, a dud. Either way, it's something we must avoid. Since these hazards, safety and reliability, are caused by premature firing of the EED, let's take a closer look at the device. Most EEDs are ignited electrically with a wire filament. Other ignition methods include spark gap and conductive mix. The ignition signal can be deliberately initiated externally by an operator pressing a button, or internally from a timer, proximity, or barometric device. Or the EED can be set off remotely with a radio command. Thus, the EED system requires a source of electricity, a switching system, a mechanism for converting electrical energy to heat, and an explosive charge designed to operate a switch, release a part, generate a gas to drive a motor, or detonate a larger, more powerful explosive. Hero problems are most often caused by unintentional ignition of wire filament EEDs. However, another type of EED, electric primers, such as those used in the phalanx close-in weapon system, also can be ignited by RF energy. During their handling, weapons may become exposed to RF radiation that induces energy into EED circuitry. Without proper precautions, this energy will ignite the EEDs. This can happen within the direct beam of a powerful radar. But premature EED ignition can also occur in an RF environment produced by communications transmitters, with the most severe problem occurring in the high frequency and very high frequency ranges. What happens is that the weapon acts as an antenna picking up the signals and directing them to the EED circuits. In fact, the whole aircraft can serve as an antenna for signals flowing to an attached weapon. 
Fortunately, these radiating antennas are usually some distance from the weapons. And the energy induced by radar and communication signals is generally well below the level required to set off an EED. However, situations can occur when this level is exceeded. For example, when an aircraft is in a strong RF field, a high potential may exist between it and the deck even though the aircraft is grounded. During loading, this difference in potential can cause a flow of current as the weapon is being connected. And discontinuities in the weapon skin, ports, cracks, and joints can make it easier for RF energy to couple into EED circuits. The level of induced energy depends on the size, shape, and orientation of the weapon, on the frequency and power of the transmitter, and the distance of the transmitter from the weapon. Since RF energy does not readily penetrate metal walls, a high level of energy may be induced on a weapon's surface with very little of this energy reaching the EED. On the other hand, when a crack or other opening is present, even a low level of RF energy can be dangerous. Also, the design of the EED system itself, the presence or absence of shielding and filtering, plays a part in whether a weapon is susceptible to radiation. All these factors are a concern as they directly affect the safety and reliability of ordnance. It is the objective of the HERO program to ensure that all Navy and Marine Corps ordnance is safe and reliable throughout its stockpile to target life cycle. To this end, HERO program personnel consult with weapon manufacturers to ensure that new weapons are immune to their electromagnetic environment. This is accomplished by design reviews and by performance tests of real hardware to see that it conforms to HERO standards. The HERO program also helps ensure safety by developing and publishing procedures for the safe handling of ordnance in the presence of RF signals. The Naval Surface Warfare Center, Dahlgren, Virginia, is the Navy's technical agent for the HERO program. The center conducts tests on ordnance and weapon systems to determine how they will respond in operational RF environments. Transmitter's on. If a weapon is sensitive, critical frequencies and power density levels are identified. From repeated tests, engineers determine the hazards to each ordnance item during authorized disassembly, handling, and loading procedures. They propose design changes when needed to increase a weapon's resistance to radiation effects. And they assign one of four hero classifications to the ordnance. Safe, if the item is immune to adverse effects when properly handled in its expected RF environment. Susceptible, if the item could be adversely affected in its expected environment. Or, unreliable, or unsafe if the item is highly susceptible and requires severe handling restrictions during some or all phases of its use. The center puts all of this information into a publication entitled Electromagnetic Radiation Hazards. Information pertinent to HERO is contained in Volume 2, Hazards to Ordnance. It includes precautions and procedures for the safe handling of electrically initiated ordnance, hero classifications, technical data, and instructions for drawing up a hero MCON bill. Let's look. A first step is making sure all hands know and follow general hero requirements, which are applicable to all ordnance regardless of classification. These requirements are defined in Chapter 5 of OP 3565. Here are a few examples of the general requirements that must be implemented for all ordnance. 
make certain that all access doors and hatches and weapons are kept closed in RF fields that exceed safe limits. Avoid unnecessary handling of umbilical cables or firing contacts. Carry hero unreliable or unsafe ordnance in a completely enclosed metal container. And follow the requirement in Chapter 5 of the Hero Manual regarding the use of portable transmitters around ordnance and safe distances between your ordnance and other ships. More specific information is available in the Hero Manual on each ordnance item. One essential piece of information is classification of the ordnance of interest. Table 6-1 lists ordnance and gives the applicable classification, hero safe, susceptible, unreliable, or unsafe. Once the classification is known, chapters 2 and 6 can be used to find other important information. For example, chapter 2 gives the minimum safe separation distances from radiation sources for hero susceptible, unreliable, or unsafe ordnance. Also given are the radiation patterns of airborne radio frequency equipment and the safe distances for ordnance handled around these transmitters. Chapter 6 lists ordnance and gives not only its hero classification, but also whether its susceptibility will lead to a safety or a reliability consequence. Finally, Chapter 6 of the Hero Manual provides data sheets for susceptible ordnance. The sheets give restricted frequencies, maximum allowable RF environment, and situations where restrictions apply. They also give additional details, such as special handling precautions. Local HERO requirements are based on the sources of electromagnetic radiation and on the susceptibility of ordnance to this radiation. When there are significant changes in radiation sources, or in your ordnance configuration, inventories, or operations, a HERO survey is needed to update your ship or station. In any case, a survey is recommended every five years. HERO surveys are performed in response to requests from ships and shore activities. The survey provides actual measurements of radio frequency fields, and in some cases may alleviate certain restrictions imposed by the HERO manual. The process begins with a pre-survey analysis. Local personnel are requested to furnish the location of all ordnance stations and transmitters, then provide specific information on each ordnance item and emitter. They provide the same information about neighbor sites. The pre-survey identifies any current HERO MCON and aircraft operation bills and describes any present HERO concerns or problems. This pre-survey information contributes significantly to a complete, accurate, effective, and expeditious field survey. We mentioned the HERO MCON bill. It is a written procedure setting HERO emission controls for specific ordnance operations for each ship and shore station. Its purpose is to set forth the easiest, safest method for managing the conflict between transmitters and HERO susceptible ordnance on a specific ship or shore activity. Writing an MCON bill starts with listing all HERO susceptible, unreliable, and unsafe ordnance and recording all transmitters, antennas, and their locations. Then, after appraising general and specific HERO problems, you can write local restrictions and prepare the HERO MCON bill. The HERO manual should answer most of your questions about the program. For more information about sea systems, contact the Naval Sea Systems Command, Naval Ordnance Center, Weapons and Explosive Safety Office. For air systems, contact the Naval Air Systems Command, Survivability and E-Cubed Branch, E-Cubed Section.
HERO is a vital program wherever our forces use ordnance in the presence of radio frequency transmissions. Under the leadership of a local weapons officer, with the knowledgeable participation of all hands, and with the engineering support of NSWC, the HERO program continues to be a success. When your safety is involved, nothing else is acceptable.